So how does all of this come together then? Well, the pituitary gland consists of two compartments. One is the anterior compartment, and the other one is the posterior compartment. Now, the main difference here is that the posterior compartment is an, essentially an extension of the hypothalamus. So, where you would need a portal circulation for the anterior pituitary gland, you only need neuronal extension in the posterior one. So, what are the hormones that comes off the posterior then, and what nuclei produces it? Well, the two hormones that come off here are going to be oxytocin, which we see here, and vasopressin. Oxytocin, we said, was important in uterine contraction, so to facilitate labor, and a mammary gland contraction, so to facilitate lactation. The other hormone that we saw was ADH, also known as vasopressin, and this hormone was important in water reabsorption from the collecting tubules in the kidney. Now, these are just simply produced by these magnocellular nuclei or these large cell nuclei within the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei, and they're stored in these herring bodies along the axonal ends of these neurons, and they are simply released to the inferior hypophyseal artery. So the anterior pituitary gland works a little bit different because it requires a portal circulation and it has a couple of different cells that would have different functions. One of these would be this one, which stains poorly. So we call this a chromophobe. Chrome means color, phobe means afraid. And simply what these cells are, are that they are reserve cells. Now these blue cells that you see here are known as basophils. Now the reason they are called basophils is because when we use a stain known as hemotoxylin eosin, the hemotoxylin portion will stain blue tissue that is rich in nucleus or ribosomes, but also uh, that has a great lysosomal action. And that's why these basophils stain blue. Now these basophils contain tyrotrophs, which produces tyrotropin or TSH. They also contain gonadotropes. Now the gonadotropes will produce FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone and LH, which is luteinizing hormone, and they also contain corticotropes. These will produce ACTH, and also melanocytes. Now, these melanocytes are important for the stimulation of pigmentation in the skin. The last types of cells are known as acetophils, and these acetophils are called so because they, because they love acid stains. So an acid stain that we will use is the hemotoxylin eosin, but this time the eosin would stain this cell red. And the reason these would stain red is because they contain a lot of granules. So granules or proteins would stain red under a hemotoxylin eosin stain. So what do they contain? Well, they simply contain somatotrophs. Now somatotrophs, soma means body, so these will help with growth. And the hormone that induces growth is the growth hormone. Lactotrophs will produce prolactin. Now I want your attention to be on this table right here. And this is going to be the most important table because this table will help us differentiate what inhibits and what stimulates the following hormones that are released from the anterior pituitary gland. So the first one is the growth hormone releasing hormone. Now obviously this will release growth hormone DAND and it will have its action on the somatotrophs. The somatotrophs being an acetophil are going to stain red under an eosin stain. The hormone that is going to inhibit this is going to be somatostatin. Somatostatin comes off the paraventricular nuclei, and what this hormone does is that it inhibits the somatotrophs from producing growth hormone, but as it also inhibits the tyrotrophs from producing TSH. Now, dopamine, as we see here, is also known as prolactin inhibiting factor or prolactin inhibiting uh, hormone. And what it does is that it acts on the lactotrophs, which are these blue ones here, to inhibit the release of prolactin. And then you have tyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH. TRH was released from the paraventricular nuclei. And simply what it does is that it acts on the lactotrophs to uh, stimulate the release of prolactin. So it would essentially stimulate prolactin releasing hormone. And another hormone it stimulates is obviously going to be the actual 
TSH. So it will act on the thyrotrophs, thyrotrophs with basophils, which we see here. And it's going to induce the stimulation or release of thyroid stimulating hormone. Another hormone is going to be the gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now this is released from the sexual dimorphic nuclei, which was located in the medial preoptic nucleus. And this will go and act on the gonadotrophs, which are the, these basophils here, gonadotrophs right here. Basophil stains blue. Why? Because of the, the hematoxylin in the hematoxylin eosin stain. And they contain a lot of acidic material once more. And these will help the releasement of FSH, which was follicle-stimulating follicle hormone and luteinizing hormone. The last hormone on our list is going to be CRH. CRH is going to be released from the paraventricular nuclei. And we'll go to the cort cortical troughs, which was, again, under the basophil category. And they will release ACTH. And then the ACTH would act on the adrenal cortex. So here we can see under a mason stain and uh, enlarged at 612 zoom, we see that this these will be your chromophobes and they produced what? Well, they produced nothing. And these would be your acidophils, which were your acidophils. They were the lactotrophs and somatotrophs. And this would be your basophils, which were your pyrotrophs, gonadotrophs, and corticotrophs, exactly. And then you would have your colloid here. Now colloid is essentially secretion material or secretion products as we see. So let's recap once more. So the principle is this, you will have releasing hormones released from the hypothalamus. They would then go through the portal circulation and then come to the anterior pituitary gland. In the anterior pituitary gland, they would either act on the acidophils or the basophils. Which types of cells were acidophils? Well, that was lactotrophs and somatotrophs. Lactotroph produced prolactin and somatotrophs produced growth hormone. And uh, which were the basophils? Well, they were everything else. So they were the corticotrophs, which produced ACTH, which then acted on the adrenal cortex. To produce glucocorticoids corticoids like cortisol and they were the thyrotrophs which went to the thyroid gland and produced thyroxine to increase the basic metabolic rate there were also the gonadotrophs which produced fsh fsh had a function the follicle stimulating hormone stimulated follicular growth in the ovaries and led to spermatogenesis in male then you had your luteinizing hormone or lh which led to ovulation in female and led to uh, testosterone production in males, as you see here, with acting the testis and produce testosterone. And we mentioned prolactin, it will lead to milk synthesis in the breast and growth hormone would act on uh, many metabolic processes around the body and induce growth essentially. And the way it works is that when these releasing hormones come, they bind to a receptor. And through this receptor, they're feed it into the cell. They then go to the nucleus, are transcribed into an mRNA. And then from this mRNA, they go through uh, the Golgi apparatus, and then they become secretory granules. And then all of these hormones that you see down here, all these uh, hormones that are produced by either acetophils and basophils are then secreted off and then they are distributed to the rest of the body. So let's talk a little bit about the homeostasis. When we talk about homeostasis, what does it mean? Well, essentially homeostasis means a balance. So if you produce too much of a hormone, because they are extremely potent, this could uh, lead to severe consequences. And if you don't have enough production, well, that too leads to severe consequences. So we need homeostasis, we need a balance. And we have this feedback system that we talked about in the last video. Now, an example here again would be the TRH. The TRH was produced where? It was produced by the paraventricular nuclei, yes. 
and then it went through the portal circulation and then it came to the witch shells in the anterior two ter gland, the pyrotrophs, and they were basophils. So from the anterior two ter gland, they, the basophils produced or the tyrotroph produced TSH that went through the thyroid gland. Now in the thyroid gland, the thyroid is going to produce a 20 to 1 ratio of T4 and T3. Now T3 is the biologically active one. It is three to four times more potent than T4. But in the blood, the T4 concentration is much more. So these would then act on the basic metabolic rate to increase it. And then you would have your normal levels of T3 and T4 in the body. You would have normal basic metabolic rate. You will have normal temperature as we said before. And if something were to happen and they suddenly were decreased or if we had a problem in the thyroid gland and we couldn't produce enough or if we produced too little, then that would stimulate the hypothalamus to produce more TRH, that would produce more TSH, that would produce more T3 and T4. So that's essentially how it works. So we have a set point, which is normal. And if for some reason the set point is decreased, then less hormones will be produced. And if the set point is increased, more hormones will produce. So this is the feedback. Too much of a hormone will lead to an inhibitory action on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. And too little of a hormone will have a positive effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Now, I hope that we covered most of the hypothalamus and talked about hypothalamic control. I know this lecture was a little bit long. And uh, in the next video, what we'll talk about is going to be the pituitary gland. Most of this will be a review. So I hope to see you then. Thank you.